JP Morgan Chase is one of the oldest, largest, and best known financial institutions in the world. The bank was formed as a result of the merger of a total of about a thousand financial institutions. Its predecessor, the Bank of Manhattan Company, was founded by Aaron Burr in 1799 and was the second oldest bank in the United States after the Bank of New York. In the early years of U.S. history, obtaining a license to open a bank was a complex procedure to circumvent which banks often registered as companies. Founded at the beginning, the Manhattan Company was formally supposed to supply water to New York to fight the yellow fever epidemic, but it was banking services that were its main activity. This also applies to many other banks that later became part of J.P. Morgan Chase. Because the bank's charter was virtually non-restrictive, it could lend money to a wide variety of clients, including merchants, land speculators, and manufacturers, as well as the New York State government. This open banking policy gave great impetus to westward expansion in the United States in the mid to late 19th century. At the turn of the century, the Bank of Manhattan established itself as one of the largest individual depositor account holders. His personal banking policy worked so well that when it merged with Chase in 1955, the Bank of Manhattan had 67 branches throughout New York and was considered one of the most successful and prestigious regional banks in America. In 1817, the Bank of the Manhattan Company is a key creditor for the construction of the Erie Canal, which opened in 1825 and connected the Hudson River to the Great Lakes. Later in the century, the bank provides funds to support interest payments on the Erie Canal's bonds and to expand and upgrade the canal. A little later, the New York Chemical Manufacturing Company opens. The merchants of New York organize it for the production of chemicals, medicines, paints, and dyes. The company's charter forbids banking, but a year later the company receives an amendment allowing it to create a banking subsidiary called the Chemical Bank. For many periods of its history, Chemical Bank has been the largest bank in the United States, either in terms of assets or market share of deposits. In 1839, a merchant bank was also opened. This institution, which merges with the Guarantee Trust Company of New York in 1929, is the earliest predecessor on the J.P. Morgan family tree. Then, after almost 15 years, an important event for the banking business is carried out and its efficiency increases. Organized by the New York Clearinghouse, with several predecessors of J.P. Morgan Chase as founding members to organize the daily settlement of checks drawn at other local banks. Couriers used to go from bank to bank to exchange checks for cash, a time-consuming and risky process. Centralized clearing significantly reduces the number of transactions and the risk between member banks. On the first day of operation, over $20 million was cleared. The same year, the Springfield Marine and Fire Insurance Company opens in 1851 to insure ships and goods and provides various banking services. Two years later, Illinois lawyer Abraham Lincoln opens a bank account there with an initial deposit of $310. Lincoln maintains his Springfield account throughout his presidency until his assassination. The firm later evolves into Marine Corporation, the predecessor of Bank One. In 1854, Junius Morgan, the patriarch of the Morgan banking family, moved to London and joined the private banking firm of George Peabody. It becomes the leading seller of American securities in England and Europe, raising capital for the first transatlantic telegraph cable in 1858. The firm was renamed J.S. Morgan and Company in 1864 and continued to be an important link in J.P. Morgan's international banking network until the end of the century. Soon the financial panic of 1857 causes 18 New York banks to close in one day and cause is a severe economic depression. Most banks are suspending specie payments, but Chemical Bank continues to redeem banknotes and gold coins helping to stabilize financial markets and earning it the moniker Old Bullion. A few years later, 
new banking laws passed during the Civil War come into force, allowing the U.S. government to create a single national currency, make it easier to borrow to pay for military expenses, and create a new system of national banks. The Legal Tender Act of 1862 provides for a standard national currency, nicknamed the Greens because of the intricate design printed on the back of banknotes. Because banknotes are not backed by gold deposits, the value of green backs fluctuates greatly. The National Banks Act of 1863 creates a new system of national banks operating under a single legal and regulatory framework alongside the older state registered banks. The law authorizes national banks to issue money in the form of amounts backed by U.S. government bonds purchased and held in reserve by banks. In the same year, two more important events take place. First National Bank of Chicago goes live, becoming the eighth bank to be nationally registered under the new National Banking Act. J. Morgan Chase Bank continues to operate under this charter aid to this day. The New York Guarantee and Indemnity Company is incorporated in New York. This institution, which became the Guarantee Trust Company of New York, later merged with J.P. Morgan in 1959. In 1868, Anthony Drexel founded Drexel, Harius & Company in Paris, the first predecessor of J. Morgan Chase in France. Three years later, J. Pierpont Morgan partners with Drexel to launch Drexel, Morgan & Company in New York, later renamed J.P. Morgan & Company. In 1871, J. Pierpont Morgan, son of Junius, partnered with Philadelphia banker Anthony Drexel to form Drexel, Morgan & Company, a private trading banking house in New York. Pierpont established his reputation as a leader in railroad investment, America's largest and fastest growing industry in the post-Civil War years. In 1895, when the firm was renamed J.P. Morgan & Company, Pierpont became head of all four subsidiaries in New York, Philadelphia, London, and Paris. After six years in 1877, Chase National Bank begins its activities. It was founded by John Thompson, a prominent New York banker and financial publisher. Thompson names the new bank after his friend Salmon P. Chase, Secretary of the Treasury under Abraham Lincoln, and architect of the national banking system. In 1879, Drexel, Morgan & Company sells William Vanderbilt's New York Central Railroad shares. The deal cements J. Pierpont Morgan's reputation as a skilled railroad financier and capital mobilizer. The next year, Morgan Finance is the completion of the Northern Pacific Railroad by guaranteeing a $40 million bond sale, at the time the largest railroad bond deal ever done in the United States. At the turn of the century, Morgan wielded tremendous power in the American railroad industry, reorganizing failed lines, orchestrating mergers, restructuring debt, eliminating competition, and cutting costs to return companies to profitability, a process the press dubbed the Morganization. In 1882, the First National Bank of Chicago creates a women's banking department one of the first in the United States to provide specially designed facilities for female clients. Over the next few decades, other banks will provide separate sections with separate entrances, desks, and lounges to provide more comfort to female customers. A year later, the Brooklyn Trust Company, the predecessor of manufacturers Hanover, is responsible for much of the nearly $15 million needed to fund the Brooklyn Bridge. At the time, it was the longest suspension bridge in the world. Three years later, William L. Strong, founder of one of the predecessors of Chemical Bank, is actively involved in the campaign to raise funds for the Statue of Liberty, donated by France. Another predecessor of Chemical Bank, Liberty National Bank, later uses the statue as its logo. In 1892, Drexel, Morgan & Company Finance is the merger of Thomas Edison's electrical companies with the Thomson Houston Electric Company to form the General Electric Company, one of the most important industrial associations of the late 19th century. In the years following the Panic of 1893, gold flowed from the United States Treasury 
causing a crisis in the national currency, banking, and international trade. J. Pierpont Morgan organizes a private sale of government bonds to European buyers to replenish the country's gold reserves and restore public confidence, paving the way for an economic recovery. In 1901, J.P. Morgan organized the buyout of industrialist Andrew Carnegie and combined about 15 companies to form United States Steel, the world's first billion-dollar corporation. Three years later, J.P. Morgan helps finance the Panama Canal by arranging a $40 million donation to the U.S. government to buy land rights from a failed French attempt to build the canal in 1881. This purchase is the largest real estate transaction in history up to that time. In 1907, J. Pierpont Morgan again takes control during the economic crisis. When the stock market crashes and banks and brokerages fail, Morgan mobilizes big New York banks to provide liquidity to desperate markets, including buying $30 million in New York bonds to avoid the city from defaulting. For two weeks, Morgan holds the group together until public confidence in the banks is restored. The crisis points to the need for a central bank and leads to the creation of the Federal Reserve in 1913. Two years later, a 50-mile canal connecting landlocked Houston, Texas to Galveston Bay is funded by bonds purchased by Texas Commerce's predecessor Union National Bank and other local banks. Built in 1914, the canal is today one of the busiest waterways in the United States. J. Pierpont Morgan dies while traveling in Rome on March 31, 1913. His son, Jack P. Morgan, Jr., becomes senior partner at J. P. Morgan and Company. The New York Stock Exchange closes before noon on the day of his funeral, an honor usually reserved for heads of state. In 1912, Construction begins on the new headquarters of J.P. Morgan & Company on the firm's historic site at 23 Wall Street. Built a year after the death of J. Pierpont Morgan, the four-story neoclassical building embodies the firm's understated business style. Morgan's name is deliberately omitted from the front of the building. Only the address 23 is indicated on the front doors. During World War Henry P. Davison, Morgan's partner, traveled to Britain and contracted with the Bank of England to make J.P. Morgan and Company Monopoly war bond insurer for Britain and France. The Bank of England and J.P. Morgan have become mutual fiscal agents of each other. Morgan organized a syndicate of approximately 2,200 banks and provided a $500 million loan to the Allies. J.P. Morgan and Company also invested in companies that supplied military equipment to the UK and France, profiting from both the financing and procurement activities of the two European governments. Other J.P. Morgan predecessor banks are supporting the war effort by providing critical banking services in war-torn Europe. After America's entry into the conflict, banks sell war bonds and many of their employees serve in the military or volunteer with the Red Cross. In addition, J.P. Morgan was the main agent for European countries for purchases in the United States. About $3 billion passed through it, which amounted to half of American deliveries to Europe during this period. During the First World War, the United States turned from a debtor into a creditor, which contributed to the rapid development of the banking sector. In addition, the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 greatly simplified the procedure for opening bank branches, including foreign ones. Thus, the 1920s became a period of consolidation of banks and expansion of the scope of their activities. The most striking example of this was Chase National Bank, which in the 1920s absorbed five American banks and three Latin American branches and in 1930 merged with Equitable, the Rockefeller Family Bank. The merger resulted in the largest bank in the world, with one of the largest international branch networks. After the Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923 destroyed Tokyo and the city of Yokohama, J.P. Morgan & Company is issuing a $150 million loan as part of an ambitious redevelopment plan. It was Japan's first dollar loan, and at the time, 
the largest long-term foreign loan ever placed on the U.S. market. Three years later, Jack Morgan was awarded the Imperial Medal of Japan for his financial assistance to the firm after the earthquake. In 1927, the Guarantee Trust invents the ADR. American depository receipts represent shares of a foreign company and are traded on U.S. stock markets in dollars, making it easier to invest in non-U.S. securities and providing access to U.S. capital. In 1927, the Guarantee Trust offers the first ADR for sale to British retailer Selfridges stores. On October 29, 1929, after a decade of speculation and rising prices, the stock market crashed, leading to the Great Depression. The impact on the banking system was devastating as lending tightened and lenders demanded interest. Depositors, worried that their bank might collapse, rushed to withdraw their savings. Over the next three years, such bank withdrawals become more and more frequent. Unable to raise new funds from the Federal Reserve, hundreds of banks around the country are failing. In 1933, the Glass-Steagall Act was passed, separating commercial and investment banking. Most of J. Morgan Chase's predecessors became commercial banks. In particular, the investment activities of J.P. Morgan & Company was spun off in 1935 as a separate company, Morgan Stanley. In its infancy, Morgan Stanley's headquarters were located a little further down the street from J.P. Morgan at 2 Wall Street, and Morgan Stanley's bankers commonly used 23 Wall Street to close deals. In 1940, J.P. Morgan goes public. J.P. Morgan & Company, a private partnership since its inception, incorporates and sells stock to the public, becoming J.P. Morgan & Company Incorporated. J.P. Morgan, Jr., the firm's senior partner, becomes the new corporation's first chairman. The following year, National Bank of Detroit is the first J.P. Morgan & Company legacy bank to open a banking window for cars. The idea was first proposed by a bank in Vernon, California, but did not become a widespread service to retail consumers until the late 1940s. Since the bombing of Pearl Harbor and America's entry into the war, the predecessor banks have supported the war effort abroad and at home. Thousands of bank employees serve in the armed forces abroad, while employees at home participate in blood draws and prepare packages of food, clothing, and supplies for troops stationed abroad. Predecessors play an important role in buying and promoting treasury securities, sponsoring stocks, and selling war bonds at branches. In 1947, Chase National Bank opens a branch in Japan and the first post-war branch of an American bank in Germany. A new wave of expansion swept over the world economy in the years following the end of World War. By opening new branches, representative offices and correspondent relationships with banks abroad, the predecessor banks began to provide a wide range of international services for customers, such as traveler's checks, it has become easier for corporate clients to obtain trade finance, bills of exchange, and commercial letters of credit. Post-war banking in America is marked by two trends, bank consolidation through mergers and the growth of bank branches, reversing the small, single office banking model that had existed for more than a century. Banking branches were seen as monopolistic, but by the 1950s, the public wanted more convenient local banking and a greater choice of services that larger banks could provide. All four of J. Morgan Chase's New York legacy firms, Chemical Bank, Chase Manhattan Bank, Morgan Guarantee Trust, and Manufacturers Handover Trust were formed during this period of consolidation. In 1955, Chase National Bank merged with the Bank of the Manhattan Company to form Chase Manhattan Bank. The new institution combines Chase National's strengths in international, corporate and correspondent banking with the Bank of the Manhattan Company's branch network and retail banking experience. Development took place under the leadership of David Rockefeller, who began working in it in 1946. In 1949, he was elected vice president in 1961 president, in 1969 chief executive officer, a post he held until 1981. 
Three years later, Chase issues the first credit card in New York. Chase Manhattan introduces Chase Manhattan Charge Plan, New York City's first bank to offer a retail credit account. The card is soon renamed UniCard, and in 1972 joins the National System Bank AmeriCard, the predecessor of Visa. In 1959, J.P. Morgan and Company Incorporated merges with Guarantee Trust Company of New York to form Morgan Guarantee Trust Company of New York. At the time, the Guarantee Trust Company had nearly all of America's top 100 companies as clients. Also two years later, Manufacturers Trust Company and the Hanover Bank merged to form Manufacturers Hanover Trust Company, the third largest banking institution in New York. In 1966, City National Bank and Trust Company of Columbus began issuing Bank America credit cards and five years later began installing credit card terminals in retail outlets. Manufacturers Hanover Trust Company and Chemical Bank founded the Eastern States Bank Card Association in 1969 to launch Master Charge Plan credit cards. Also in 1969, Chemical Bank installed a prototype credit card dispenser, a prototype of the ADM. Subsequently, Master Charge Plan cards became known as MasterCard, and Bank America became Visa. At the same time, Morgan Guarantee in Brussels is launching EuroClear, a system that provides orderly settlement of Eurobond transactions, a new form of international collateral. In 1972, ownership is transferred to users and in 2000 Euroclear Bank is opened to carry out the operational and banking functions formerly performed by Morgan Guarantee. Morgan Guarantee, Chase Manhattan, Manufacturers Hanover, Chemical, and First National Bank of Chicago are being reorganized into holding companies. This provides greater flexibility in raising capital and expanding geographically and functionally. The Wisconsin Maritime Corporation, the predecessor of Bank One is the first bank holding company in the United States, founded in 1958. In 1973, Chase Manhattan opens a representative office in Moscow, becoming the first American bank to have a business office there since the 1920s. Ties with mainland China resumed the same year that Chase Manhattan became the Bank of China's first American correspondent after the 1949 revolution. In 1980, Bank One tests an early version of home banking called Channel 2000. Bank customers can view their bank accounts on TV, pay bills, and transfer money between accounts. The service operates over regular telephone lines. In 1983, Chemical Bank introduces Pronto, the first full-fledged online banking service. And in 1985, Chase Manhattan Bank introduces Spectrum, a home banking service offering three levels of service, basic banking, financial planning, and investment. In the same decade, the United States began relaxing the laws governing banking activities and allowed the creation of a network of branches covering all states. This gave impetus to the rapid growth of banks through the opening of new branches, expansion of the scope of activities, and mergers. The most active in the field of acquisitions was Bank One Corporation, which by 1994 absorbed 81 banks with 1,300 branches in 13 states. In 1987, Chemical bought the Texas-based Texas Commerce Bank shares, the largest interstate merger to date. As a result of the mergers, the number of banks decreased from 12,000 in the late 1990s to 7,500 in 2005, while the number of branches and ADMs continued to grow. Also, with the relaxation of the Glass-Steagall Act, the U.S. Federal Reserve provides J.P. Morgan and Company the right to underwrite and deal with corporate debt securities. A year later, Morgan gains share underwriting authority becoming the first bank holding company in the U.S. to provide clients with a full range of security services since the 1930s. In 1991, Chemical Banking Corporation merged with Manufacturers Hanover Corporation in what was reported in the press as a merger of equals. 
The new firm is called Chemical Banking Corporation and is the second largest banking institution in the U.S. after Citicorp. In 1995, Chemical launches online banking, which allows customers to combine all of their accounts and access them from their home computers. A year later, Chase Manhattan Corporation merged with Chemical Banking Corporation, one of the largest mergers in U.S. banking history. At the time, it was the largest banking holding in the United States. After another five years, J.P. Morgan and Company Incorporated merges with the Chase Manhattan Corporation. The new firm is called J.P. Morgan Chase and Company. In 2004, J.P. Morgan Chase and Co. merged with Bank One Corporation, headquartered in New York, with a retail arm in Chicago. The new firm retains the name J. Morgan Chase and Company. In 2008, J.P. Morgan Chase suffered billions of dollars in losses during the subprime mortgage crisis, a severe liquidity squeeze in credit markets around the world caused by a sharp devaluation of mortgage-backed securities. In late 2008, the U.S. government invested $25 billion in J.P. Morgan Chase under the Emergency Economic Stabilization Act, a law designed to prevent the crisis from further damaging the U.S. financial system. Later in May 2012, J.P. Morgan Chase announced that the bank's investment arm had lost about $2 billion in a complex series of derivatives deals, including credit default swaps. Also in 2008, J.P. Morgan Chase helped stabilize markets by acquiring bankrupt investment from Bear Stearns Companies and Seattle-based savings and loan company Washington Mutual. In 2010, mobile banking capabilities are being introduced to help customers manage their accounts, pay, and transfer money. That same year, J.P. Morgan leads General Motors in its IPO acting as joint book runner and co-underwriter in a $23.1 billion sale, the largest IPO in the world at the time. In 2018, J.P. Morgan Chase announces plans to replace its 270 Park Avenue headquarters building with a new skyscraper. The new world-class office tower will house all downtown New York employees. Today, J.P. Morgan Chase is the largest investment bank in the world and the largest commercial bank in the United States, and is one of the big four U.S. banks, along with Bank of America, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo. It brings together two of the most respected names in banking, J. Pierpont Morgan and David Rockefeller. The activities of J.P. Morgan Chase are divided into four main divisions. Consumer and public banking serving individuals and small businesses through a network of branches and IDMs. Includes the provision of mortgage and other loans, servicing credit cards, accepting deposits. Corporate and investment bank serves corporations, investors, financial institutions, governments and municipalities with about half of its activities outside the United States. Carries out operations with securities provides custody services. Commercial banking serving U.S. corporations and financial institutions with an annual turnover ranging from $20 million to $2 billion. Services include lending, treasury services, investment banking, and others. Asset management, the bank manages clients' assets through subsidiaries. Stock exchange ticker JPM 